Welcome to this week's Quick Charge. There was one disciple of Jesus who no doubt had the closest relationship with Jesus of them all. His name was John and he was a simple fisherman. In his later life, he encountered some intense periods of persecution and personal tribulation and was exiled to an island. During this time, he received the revelation of the entire Bible, an unveiling, a disclosure, where he is actually lifted up into the very throne room of God, the very center of everything visible and invisible. And throughout this experience, he is being surrounded by so much God, all of the sights and sounds, as well as all of the angelic activity. And near the end of this great revelation, he is approached by what he described as a mighty angel. And this is John's account of that brief encounter. In Revelation 19.10, he says, I bowed down at the angel's feet to worship him. But he said to me, do not worship me. I'm a servant like you and your brothers who have the truth of Jesus. Worship God. The fact that this happened at all is rather curious, but the fact that it happened a second time within the space of an hour is even more curious. In Revelation 22, verse 8, he says, I am John. I am the one who heard and saw these things. And when I heard and saw them, I bowed down to worship at the feet of the angel who showed these things to me. But the angel said to me, do not worship me. I am a servant like you and your brothers, the prophets. I am a servant like all those who obey, obey the words in this book, worship God. So here is a seasoned, faithful man of God who is surrounded by all of this God wherever he looked, who has to be told twice in a very short span, worship God. Don't look at me, look at him. Don't give your attention to me, give it to him. Don't focus on me, focus on him. And there is a life lesson in this, and it really has a life-saving message, and that is this. There is always something competing for our attention. There is a contest over what we look at. My enemy wants my attention more than anything that I have. His primary strategy is to capture and to command my attention. Cain was out in the fields when the enemy got his attention. He got him to dwell on and focus on a perceived insult, a slight, a perceived lack of favor. Well, God loves Abel more and he loves you less. Even though he was standing and working in his field and attending to his crops, his primary attention was captured and diverted and it led to the unraveling of his life and his destiny. In the temptations of Jesus, the one thing the devil actually asked for was this, give me your attention, worship here. He didn't say don't heal anyone or don't save anyone or don't die for anyone. You can attend to those. There was no attempt to stop him. Why? Because if he had captured Jesus's attention, everything else would unravel on its own. Don't forget, one third of God's angels became demons simply by turning their attention. Why is my attention so valuable? Why is it so important to my enemy? Why does he come after it relentlessly and repeatedly? Why does he want my attention on something, on anything other than God? Well, Let's find out in part two of So What Are You Looking At? Until next week, God bless.